All right, let's see if that this starts. Okay, yeah. can you see my slides? Yeah, see it full screen. Yep. Is the all right, good, great. So five minutes about cloud ready geo server. So my name is Andrea Aime, I work for GeoSolutions. We provide services around um, various open source projects, including GeoServer. Uh, we are a part of OS Geo, we are part of OGC, and uh, we support GeoInt. This uh, presentation is about how GeoServer is evolving to uh, keep up with the cloud. So the, the overall trajectory of, uh, of GeoServer and its support for the cloud has been, well, pretty much user-driven, like any other development in, uh, happening in GeoServer. So um, customers with uh, support contracts and, uh, generally speaking, people interested in contributing to GeoServer start adding bits and pieces to GeoServer that uh, help uh, supporting with the cloud, leveraging uh, the GeoServer modular architecture, typically one module at a time in a organic sometimes a bit chaotic way uh, we uh, we get more and more uh, sorry we get more and more uh, functionality so the first uh, thing that happened was well just deploy it uh, just so it does not need to be uh, modified to actually work in the cloud and so we got a ton of uh, level, uh, deployments as um AMI with Docker, with Kubernetes. Uh, of course, we can integrate with uh, the existing cloud DBMSs because they talk the, the same uh, protocols as uh, their desktop equivalents or their server equivalents. We can leverage elastic scaling and so on. So GeoServer is happily sitting there in the cloud without making uh, um, uh, taking advantage of um, the cloud characteristics, the cloud unique characteristics. Next stack has been uh, the obvious cost cutting, uh, blob storage for uh, Thai caches. So uh, we got uh, early in the process support for storing Thai caches in S3, Azure Blob, Swift. Uh, at the moment, we don't have Google storage, but again, it's just another plugin that needs to be um, written. And uh, uh, then, um, sorry. Then GeoWave and GeoMesa started piggybacking on uh, GeoServer to uh, to get OGC protocol support. GeoWave and GeoMesa both supported distributing data over a computational grid and uh, distributing calculation, and they are typically deployed on the cloud. So basically, GeoServer was acting as front end as an OGC front end for these two systems, uh, for both the well, for most of the protocols, but typically WMS, uh, WMTS, and WFS with possibly some WPS support. Then we got COG support. We had two iterations of COG support. The first module was called S3 GeoTIFF. It was specific for S3, it didn't work with any other um, blob storage, and it did not leverage the COG structure, which, well, we have been talking about it uh, for a couple of days now, allows for efficient debt transfer out of the, the blob storage comes the, the COG module. The COG module reads only proper COGs. It leverages their internal structure for efficiency. It supports uh, generic, generic HTTP servers, S3, and Google Storage. We hope to have Azure uh, blobs support soon. And there is good integration with the image mosaic, so we can support large collections and time series. Uh, I don't have it in the slides, but uh, there is a plugin floating around that allows to use a stack server as an index for the image mosaic so that you can literally just query the, the stack uh, API in this case, not a stack catalog, but a stack API to power the image mosaic on the fly. We got flat GeoBuff support, uh, courtesy of the um, author of flat GeoBuff, which did develop a data store so that we can uh, read the flat GeoBuff and uh, deliver it through OGC protocols. But also we can produce flat GeoBuff again with a, an output format, which uh, plugs in into WFS uh, and also OGC API features. And uh, I think it's, a, in a, it's an interesting opportunity because, well, we have been talking all day about how efficient it is to uh, access data uh, through the space um, aspect of it, so uh, bounding box searches and so on. 
but sometimes you really want it to just do um, efficient SQL uh, filtering, so alphanumeric or time-based filtering, and uh, oh, you can do that uh, against your, uh, I don't know, whatever data source you're, you are uh, uh, using, and then generating uh, a flat geobuffing output, which is an efficient way to stream out uh, the information uh, you filtered down to your client. Then there are OGC APIs, GeoServer supports uh, a bunch of them, features, styles, styles, map coverages, uh, also uh, DGGSs. OGC APIs per se are not um, um, cloud specific, there is nothing cloud specific about them, but uh, having the support for OGC APIs in general <clears throat> enabled support for the creation of a stack module in GeoServer. We already had an OGC Open Search for EO module in GeoServer that uh, more or less had the same concept. You have the collections, you have the products instead of items. And uh, we basically built a Stack API support on top of it uh, with full search with the, the new SQL2. And uh, the um, current database is a PostGIS database uh, with fully customizable database structure. So you can uh, go and add and destroy columns as you as you please, and uh, the module will adapt it to the new structure. We have a full templating for both JSON and HTML representation. Here in the slides, you can see DLR, the German Space Agency, um, customizing it for the loose project. And uh, of course, it will be possible, again, to plug in other storages if you don't like uh, the PostGIS one. Another interesting integration that uh, uh, is uh, growing, uh, we don't have it open source right now just because it's uh, an early prototype. We have a connection uh, to Azure Databricks, uh, which ends up uh, leveraging the uh, Databricks SQL API so that GeoServer can pick um, uh, data stored in, in the data lakes. In this use case, we have the position of vessels, ships around Europe, um, with uh, several years of, um, of history, we are talking about billions of positions which minute. are getting published, sorry? One more minute. Yeah, we are getting published uh, through WF, WMS and WFS, but not just that, we are using uh, Spark to aggregate and enrich them into trajectories and correlate uh, the trajectories of multiple ships and so on. And that is it. Awesome, thanks so much. Actually, Andrea. wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh. I skipped one slide, sorry, my, my bad. Uh, one final thing, um, at, uh, on GitHub, at GeoServer slash GeoServer dash cloud, you can find this uh, cloud native GeoServer, which is a repackaging of GeoServer as uh, microservices. So single, single jar Spring Boot applications, each jar serves a, a, a single protocol, so we have one microservice for WFS, one for WFS, one for WMS, and so on. Uh, another microservice for the catalog, another one for the tiles, and so on, with distributed updates uh, via message passing. So this is just, it's interesting to see how a 20 years old application can uh, be modified to become a, a bunch of microservices, just because it has been architected as a set of uh, standalone modules which can be plugged in and off and uh, this allowed us well actually allowed uh, camp to camp to repackage everything as a bunch of microservices awesome yeah, thanks. thanks andrea let's uh switch presenter over to jeff um but yeah that was awesome andrea i think you definitely just made me feel old with the 20 year old application since GeoServer was the first thing i worked on and andrea and i worked together for many years and yeah super right. psyched to see cloud all the cloud native standards come into GeoServer and kind of two major parts of my life come together. So super, super psyched to see this work, Andrea. Um, and then...